Ah, the flat lay, aka the overhead shot. It's usually where you lay everything out in a nice aesthetic fashion. Everything is in focus, evenly spaced. Once you get it all laid out and dialed in, now comes the hard part, taking the actual picture. This is usually where you'll stand on a chair, or maybe even a table, but not today. Not today. Today I'm going to show you how to turn any and every tripod into an overhead camera rig. Let's get it. What up, my name is Gene, and this is the Feeding Model, where we focus on models that feed your eyes and nourish your soul. I'm talking about food, film, and photo, and everything else in between. Welcome back, and much love to my returning subscribers. One time for my first time viewers. You could have been anywhere in the YouTube world, but you're here with me, you're here with us, and we appreciate you for that. So let's get right to it. Here's a few things you'll need to turn your tripod into an overhead camera rig. <laughs> We'll need a four foot length piece of two by two, quarter 20 inch threaded insert, quarter 20 inch threaded hanger. We'll also need a quarter 20 inch wing nut, sandpaper, an 11 32nd drill bit, a 13 64th drill bit, a drill of course, flathead screwdriver, measuring tape, a pencil or marker, and towards the end we will need a counterweight so that we can balance this thing out. I'll have a link in the description for everything that I just mentioned. I picked all of this up at the local Home Depot. I'll get into the details of each piece as we start putting this thing together as we move along. So without wasting any more time, let's turn this tripod, your tripod, any tripod into an overhead rig. All right, so the first thing we want to do is grab our four foot piece of two by two. Now this right here is a rough cut piece of wood. This does have some splinters if you're not careful, so be mindful of that. We're gonna get rid of that right now with the sandpaper. Also, this usually comes in an eight foot length. If you don't have a saw at home to cut this, don't even trip. You can get them to cut this down at Home Depot. Just ask the customer service rep to help you with this. Um, it's free of charge to cut pieces. Also, another thing to be mindful of is that these things tend to come bowed and warped. So try to find the straightest piece that you can find when picking this out. They do have a cherry wood that you can get that's already four foot in length, and it's a lot much nicer, smoother, finished and it's straighter, you don't have to worry about that. It looks better, but it does cost a little bit more than this here, which was only a buck and some change for an eight foot piece where the cherry wood is gonna be about five bucks for just half that. So yeah, so the first thing we're gonna do is sand this up, smooth it out, just hit the edges, get any little splinters out of it so that we don't have to worry about it when we're handling this thing and clean the edges up get it nice and smooth on the edges. Once we get that taken care of and it's all smooth, we wanna mark and measure where we're gonna be putting the holes for our threaded inserts. And we got three spots that we wanna do this in. Our first hole is gonna be at the very end on the face of this two by two. It's gonna be 1364 hole centered here. Um, the second one is going to be an 11 32nd hole midway down the length of this two by two and the third hole is gonna be a foot away from that on the opposite end of our first hole. We wanna measure and mark that before we get drilling and inserting these threaded inserts. So I'm gonna go two foot down the length and measure that way. And mind you, this doesn't really have to be perfect. It's not that critical to get it exact for what we're doing here. So to get this hole at the face centered, it's gonna be three quarters of an inch from two sides because this measures an inch and a half. I think that's my three quarters right here. How's that? Again, this don't have to be perfect, man. Just the, the end of the day, just get it close enough and you'll see why it doesn't really have to be perfect. All right, so we got our three holes marked. Actually, I'm gonna come across the center here and measure the three quarters this way. I made a little dimple with the pen so that the drill bit doesn't walk when I start drilling because I want to make sure that this thing goes in exactly where we marked it. So, all right, so we got our three holes measured and marked. Next thing we want to do is 
set up our drill so that we can start drilling these holes. Using the 1364th bit, we're gonna drill the first hole at the face on the very end of this piece. You wanna be mindful and be careful of your hand placement, where you put your hand when you're using a drill. Of course, you don't wanna drill through your fingers. I've had that done, it's not fun. And also, just try to get this hole as straight as possible when you start to drill into this thing. Um, try to make sure that the drill is straight. And that's what it looks like. I tried to get it as center as possible. Again, don't worry about that. For the other two, I have to switch bits. We're gonna be using the 11 30 seconds bit for the other two holes. Now for these two holes, you wanna go about halfway through. If you go all the way through, don't worry about it. It won't hurt anything, but try to just go in at least half an inch, maybe um, three quarters of an inch. Try to keep the drill bit straight and perpendicular to the plane of this piece here so that when you put your threaded insert into it, you don't have to worry about it going in crooked. All right, so as you can see, this last hole walked on me, but it's no big deal. We'll be all right with that. Now we got our holes drilled up. Now it's time to put the threaded inserts and the threaded hanger in here, kind of assemble this thing to turn it into something that we can actually use with our tripod. All right, so the first thing we're gonna insert are these threaded inserts. This is what's gonna help us fasten the rig to the tripod. Um, there are quarter 20 inch threads inside of them. And there's two types. There's this type here where you have to hit it in with a hammer and we have this type where you can screw it in with a flathead screwdriver. Since I already have the screwdriver, I ain't gonna have to go get a hammer and start banging shit. So we're gonna go with this one here. Once we got our pilot holes made, all we have to do is take our threaded insert and try to keep it straight and just screw it in as you would a regular screw. We screw it in till it's flush with the face of our rig. That's the first one. And here comes the second one. You can clean this up with like sandpaper or whatever. Put this one in here like so. All right, so now that I got these both screwed in, I'm gonna go ahead and put the threaded hanger on the end of this. This is a quarter 20 inch threaded hanger. This piece right here is what's gonna help us fasten our camera onto the rig. It's gonna go at the very end. This part is going into the wood and this part is going into the camera. There's two ways you can do this. You can put this into the drill chuck and drill it in, which is the easiest way, but make sure that this is like really tight in the chuck or if it slips, it'll damage the threads and you don't want that or you can grab the wing nut, screw the wing nut all the way in until it bottoms out and then just use that to screw it into the wood by hand. So first I'll show you how to do it with the drill and then I'll do it by hand. So that's what it's gonna look like. Remember, it has to be really tight. If it slips, you damage the threads, you'll have to just use another one. So let's do that real quick. And then just loosen the chuck. And there you have it, it's in there. So I'm gonna take it out real quick and do it over with the wing nut since the hole's already set up. So you just put the wing nut on there, lock it down towards the bottom of the thread and just screw it in. Easy peasy. And then you take the wing nut off. All right, so that's it. The rig is pretty much done, right? The only thing you wanna do now is take the wing nut off and reverse it and then screw it back on. What this is gonna help us do is once we get this onto the camera, the camera may not land on perfectly square with the rig, so we can back it up and then use this to tighten the camera onto the rig and that'll be it. If you wanna mark them up, you can, so you know. I don't think you need to mark it up, but you can. See if my pen still works. There we go. Can I just say that filming on two cameras at once is like the most difficult thing ever. I'm like all over the place, but all right, so let's get this thing together. 
You're gonna grab your tripod. This is actually my first and only tripod. I think I paid like $30 for this at Target. But you're gonna get your tripod. If it has a quick release plate, you may wanna take that off so you don't have to swing this thing around. But if you don't, that's what you're gonna have to do. So I'm gonna take this quick release plate off, grab the back of my plate and screw this onto my rig like this. Once you got it on your quick release for your tripod, make sure that's square. You're gonna hook that up, screw it into your camera. You'll see what I'm talking about right now when I said that um, this is where the wing nut comes in. So you're gonna screw that in until it stops. And you see where it stops? It's kind of off angle. If I had this on my tripod, this is how the camera would be and we don't want that. So we're gonna back it up and then use our wing nut to tighten the camera to where it's flush and square with our rig, something like that. Perfectly square somewhat, and you could always turn that. So now that we got our camera on our rig, our clip, we can go ahead and drop this onto the tripod. Of course, you might wanna lock down your tripod. And there you have it. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that this thing wants to pull off because of the weight of the camera. This is where you will need a counterweight, something like sandbags, or just something that you can hang on this end of the rig so that, for one, you don't want this to tip over your tripod, and also you don't want this thing to snap out of the quick release, because there's a lot of weight hanging on the end of this now, especially if you plan on using the hole closer to this end if you need to reach out a little further. You definitely want something to counterbalance this thing. So you wanna get some weight to put towards the end of this. And that's where this weighted bag is gonna come into play. So I'm gonna open this up real quick. And just like that, there you have it. Your tripod is now an overhead camera rig. Something else that you may find helpful for using a setup like this is some type of remote control for your shutter so that you don't have to trigger the camera with your hands and introduce any type of vibration or shake or especially if this thing is like way up and out of reach um, having a wired controller for your shutter or even a wireless one will help i'll leave a link in the description below so that you can look these up and purchase them. They're very inexpensive, very easy to use, and very convenient. And I think that about covers it. This is how you turned your tripod into an overhead camera rig. So go ahead and make one. Tag me in your creation. I would love to see how you use it and implemented this hack into your usage when it comes to overhead photography and creating some flat lays and video as well. I think I covered just about everything. If I didn't, feel free to leave any questions or comments down in the comment section. If you have any questions on picking up some of the parts that were listed below, um, I'm always available to answer any questions. So just hit me up down here or on IG or whatever the case may be, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. That about wraps it up for me. I'm gonna go ahead and snap the flat lay that I was working with just a bit earlier. So I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.